there guys, it's Eliana. I'm hoping that you're seeing that it's light enough. It looks a little dark. Hold on. Hi. Welcome to Friday. Oops. Welcome to Friday morning. It's 9 a.m. A little bit after due to little technical working things out. Uh, today is the uh, last day of the week and I said I would be giving a music meditation on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. If you didn't see the other ones, you are... And I'm going to also be giving a Kabbalah Shabbat, which I will do at 5 p.m. Pacific time as well. The subject and the focus of today's meditation is connecting to your self-confidence and your self-esteem uh, within confinement. And um, uh, at this point, it's a few weeks, you know, that we're in self-isolation. And um, well, let me start with the music, and then we'll really afterwards. So just sit back. You could let me know what is uh, for those of you. There are a few of you on right now. I uh, so the uh, what is the biggest challenge for you, or what is the biggest support that you would like uh, today while you're in confinement? This ancient healing music way always has a focus to it, and I'm going to compose a piece now that is. I focused on the experience that you would like and I'll start with self-confidence. The, um, the reason being is I don't know about you and I would like to know if you can relate to this as well. I, I woke up this morning exhausted, really tired and I'm noticing that over the last several days I've been so much in activity, but it's activity that is to keep present, but I can't continue that. It won't, if I do that right now, it will be kind of like uh, an energetic violation of myself, and that's not self-love. Do that. What it brings is this uh, realization. If I didn't know it before, and if you didn't know it before, we're not in control. And I'm noticing how being busy and doing things can be a really nice drug to avoid just being with yourself. And so that's why the focus now is on self confidence. Can you relate to this, please? Um, say, yes, I relate. No, I don't. I'd really like to know. And if it's something else, please uh, write, because then I can focus on, on what that is. Simone. Hi, Simona. Hi, Leonard. Oh, great to see you guys. Well, let's start.
Others and Molly, my beautiful niece, wonderful, and Nila Zer from Israel, welcome, and Margarita Gonzalez. Wow, that's so wonderful. And I saw that many others came in too. Thank you so much. I want to share with you a beautiful sound right now that is uh, measured as the vibratory rate of the Earth's rotation. It's the cosmic note. The vibratory rate is somewhere in between Do and Re or C and D, but it's not that and it's not that and it's not uh, Do dies or Do or Re bemol. It's not C sharp or uh, B flat. For those of you who are in the music world, it is somewhere in between. In the Western world, we divide music you know, as an interval. Think about a piano intervals in the black keys in the middle. We divide them into two. Actually, in the Eastern world, that same interval that we in the West divide into two is divided in up to 13 parts, that same. The human ear hears at the level of coma, that's what it's called. Coma is about uh, divided into nine, and uh, it means that our ears, they are acculturated, and vibration is the essence of all matter, and there's a vibratory rate to everything, and this 
this uh, this uh, sorry a call just came in this right if you just hum it to yourself it has a balancing effect so I'm going to sing now a cosmic melody that's wordless and you can sing it with me. It is a piece that I composed uh, in 1998 with that little attuner that Barbara Marks Hubbard bequeathed to me. Barbara Marks Hubbard, for those of you who don't know her, was a futurist, a very, very powerful woman. And we had a uh, mutual vision, an audio vision, that this note would be, what would happen if people together would sing this note, hum this note? And um, we were going to bring her to Israel, so I was living in Israel at the time, and for the turn of the millennial, we were going to have a big event. Do you remember YK, Y2K or YK2 <laughs> and the Intifada, the Mideast crisis? Killed it, didn't happen. But the melody was still there, and this melody evolved and led to the medical research that we conducted upon this ancient healing and transformational music. And what has been proven with this research is that it lowers stress, heart beat, heart beat increases focus and quality of sleep, and. Uh, over the last week, when I started excuse me, doing this, I read my mom, this is an article that was written on our research back in 2000 and, what is this, 2003, when we were in the middle of the research, on, on the research, and I've never read that article until, since it came out, till this week. And the first baby they gave me suffered from respiratory disease. Look at that. And here we are with coronavirus. Now, it has been effective with PTSD and stroke and cancer and anxiety and postpartum. I, it's so many, so many different areas. And I would love for us to sing this together. Excuse me, just taking this off. You can hum while I sing the melody. I'll sing the melody once, and then if you'd like to sing along with me, you could do it also. It connects to all areas, begins in the heart area and then comes up to the crown of the body and then roots back down in. I'm going to sing it again if you'd like to uh, uh, sing yourself or just the note while I'm singing the melody. It's really quite, quite beautiful and you can't screw it up. You're just aligning yourself with your confidence 
with your ease, with your calm. Uh, feeling now? For those of you who are online, please uh, write in the comments, and if you're watching this later, please write in the comments now. I'm very curious. Does this uh, come across the, the video? I don't know. <laughs> Not in control of this process. What do you, what do you have to say? This melody is part of a, not part of, it is the uh, piece of a virtual healing music choir that uh, when we first got uh, shut in a few weeks ago, on a Sunday evening I got a download by God, and you know, do the healing music choir virtually, use the cosmic melody and I spent the next few days uh, putting a website together and instructional videos so that people, so that we could generate a user-generated virtual healing music choir that each person would sing and record their own, their own cosmic melody or the cosmic note, upload it to video, upload it to YouTube, and then we'll aggregate all the videos together into one piece where you see everyone and then we send this out into the world for public health. There are no words so it's applicable to everyone around the world. We have the medical research that proves that it works and I had put the deadline for submissions through March 31st and I expected people would just choo. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> this really requires all of us to get the word out. And so, uh, the, and the pieces that have come in, they're just so beautiful. They've come in from all over the world. And the last one came in of a mother and daughter together. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Not beautiful in the sense of a performance. But each voice, there are children and there are older women and older men and um, young, young folks, you know, multi-generational, imagine, imagine. So now the latest iteration that is coming to me that I want to invite you to is that um, we're going to continue it. I'm not going to take it down. and, and we're going to aggregate it as soon as there are more than a hundred people. There were seven people who responded. And we need at least a hundred. And other virtual music choirs, which you'll see on the site, it's voicesofedenlive.com. 
and you'll see Eric Whitaker, he, he did the first virtual music choir about 10 years ago as an experiment, and it's just so beautiful. Why shouldn't we have healing music choirs? This has been a vision of mine for 20 years, and here, you know, here we are. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but what else am I going to do in sequestered at home? You, know, you can go with the fear, you can go with the faith, and this entire healing music modality was born out of, out of faith. And I'm seeing Neela's name here. Neela, I'm remembering that beautiful, beautiful event that we had at your synagogue for, for the Hebrew New Year. This is several years ago when the entire congregation sang. They had never heard of this music before. It was wordless. I actually have a beautiful little video of that if you want. Uh, send me a message and I'm happy to to send it to you so you could uh, let your beautiful folks hear that, their voices. Um, so here's what I am wanting to do. Next week is Passover. The idea was March 31st to have this whole thing, all of the submissions in and then this week that there would be some wonderful editor who would show up and we'd edit this and then next week for Passover, send it out to the world. Well, that ain't happening. That was a great idea, but it's not my timing, it's in divine timing. And um, the next step is that Next week is Passover, and last year I gave a live Miriam Seder, the prophetess Miriam, sister of Moses, feminine leader, who used voice and sound to part waters. Watch my TED Talks, you'll see the scientific base, the, the scientific base behind it. I'll put, you know, and I'll put the TED link. This is my second TED talk. You see how, how sound can part water. Anyway, here's the latest idea, is that we're going to do the Miriam Seder virtually. It was supposed to be live this year. Again, we did a pilot last year. It was fantastic. It was really fantastic. Uh, put together a, um, I'll show you, hold on. Put together a beautiful Miriam's Secret Passover Seder experience. It was so, it's so beautiful. So we have this all available. You don't have to be Jewish. It's not about religion. It's about our exploring together the power of feminine leadership. And then this is Miriam's Secret, Revealing the Ancient Wisdom of Feminine Leadership, book one, which is the repository of 30 years of this research. And we use this to, through feminine leadership and inspiration, just open and have questions and see what comes up like I'll do it right now. What will support our confidence in uh, isolation? Dare and delight. <laughs> when you dare to follow the wisdom of your heart, it brings untold delight. Daring to act upon your own wisdom, agreeing to follow the direction of your heart is a powerful and courageous act of leadership. It requires that you trust yourself. Miriam was a daring leader. She would certainly have been intuitively attuned to the tides of change about to wash over humanity. She dared lead in a way that allowed her, that allowed for experiencing and expressing delight at triumph over extreme difficulty as evidenced by the song at the sea celebration. This is what is written in the ancient scriptures. And Miriam the prophetess, sister of Aaron, took a drum in her hand and all the women went after her drumming and dancing. 
as you dare to listen to your own wisdom and your confidence, it will provide answers for you that you, that you can follow to your own personal promised land. As your own prophet or prophetess, you understand that you have an inner GPS guidance system that will guide you to a life of good. That is, if you will only dare. <laughs> That's my invitation to you today. So I'm going to be, I, I want as many people to show up for this so that we can explore together and I will teach the no, I, I won't teach. You can go. I've already taught it. All of the, you have it here and throughout this week I've been singing it and you can go to VoicesOfEdenLive.com. There's a master class in there and there are instructional videos where I teach this. It doesn't cost you a cent except your stress and your anxiety. And uh, we will meet and we will sing together live. That's never been done. In the master class, I taught it, but this time we can sing together. And if you're not a singer, there's no need for you to be a singer. You can hum, you can hum silently, and you can just receive. <laughs> but showing up is the issue. And I am not sure when to do this, at what time that it is best for everyone. I'm going to put a poll out on the Facebook walls today and to my newsletter group. If you're not part of the newsletter group, you're welcome to join us. Go to VoicesOfEden.com and you will receive a gift of an ancient healing music meditation that was composed and recorded at one of the ancient healing sites in Israel. It's very, very powerful with a guide of how you can use that for yourself. And I will put out a poll today, like now, right now, and then we'll see what the most response is, and that is how I will decide at what time to do it. Today I'm going to put out an event page and then at 5 p.m. today, I'm going to give a Kabbalah Shabbat, 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I will announce then when it will be. So this is virtual, this is real time, this is co-creation, and uh, I would love to know what you're, what you're experiencing here. How is this for you? Does it speak? Do you want it to continue? If so, I'll continue. <laughs> but the next is the Seder. I'm thinking of that we do it on Friday, next Friday, which is in the middle of Passover, which gives us a week to get the word out. Or it could be the last night of Passover. Which one would you prefer? Please put in the comments, and I will also um, do a poll. Wishing you a wonderful, wonderful day, and that you do something kind for yourself, because you truly, truly deserve it. Bye-bye. <laughs>